You're listening to 15 Minutes, where we feature community leaders sharing what the rest of us should know but likely don't. Hello, everyone. Michael Renfro here. I'm the host of 15 Minutes. Share your voice where we talk with top-notch law firms and lawyers about what it takes to grow a successful law firm. Uh, The episode is brought to you by Gladiator Law Marketing, where we deliver top-notch services to help accomplish your objectives and maximize your growth potential. To have a successful marketing campaign, you really need to make sure you're getting, or excuse me, and to make sure you're getting the best ROI, your firm needs to have a better website and better content. Uh, At Law, excuse me, at Gladiator Law Marketing, we use artificial intelligence as well as machine learning and decades, and actually it's closer to centuries of uh, experience to outperform the competition. To learn more, simply go to gladiatorlawmarketing.com or you can reach out to me directly. Uh, Either way, if you would like to do a free consultation, that is available. If you want to reach out to me directly, again, that email address or the uh, website is Gladiator Law Marketing, or you can do it directly at Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, at Gladiator Law Law Marketing, and I'll schedule an appointment for you. With that, uh, today, our guest is, and you know, this is so embarrassing, but I ended up scheduling it with your paralegal, and I think you told me your name right here at the beginning, and I've talked to you, but your name escapes me as I sit here and, and get ready to introduce you. So would you introduce yourself? I know you're in the crypto, the, the mm-hmm. crypto uh, currency is a, your law practice, but my yeah, apologies. Here. No, no, all good. So my name's Andrew Bull, B-U-L-L. And as the, the name fits, Bull Blockchain Law is the name of the law firm. And Which is it's awesome. A law, it's a law firm that's completely focused on, as you pointed out, the cryptocurrency and blockchain industry. So real quick, just before we even get into it, how long, uh, you know, crypto is, I know, relatively new, but how long have you been, uh, how long has Bull been around and and how long have you been doing this? Yeah, for sure. So I've been in the crypto industry since like 2011, 2012, and I worked on the tech side. Originally, I ran a crypto mining company as well as a a crypto investment fund and then transitioned over the legal side in what I was writing about in law school and then launched the firm in 2017. So we've been a law firm since then. That was really kind of where the area of law started to grow in the context of there actually being regulation as well as judicial rulings, things along those lines. So prior to that, there really wasn't any area or kind of consistency in terms of standards and practices. So now fast forward today and we have a whole industry. Well, yeah, it's kind of funny. I I, I tell people even today, I mean, even though there are some laws, it's the closest thing to the wild, wild west right now, just because it's so... It's just so new, right? I mean, it was literally uh, what do you call it? gold rush, you know, a few years ago before before the laws were there, and now it's still it's still just it's it's a crazy world. So, um, let, let's kind of dive right into it because that really leads me into this. I know that's how you got started in crypto, and and uh, I kind of get the impression that you were already going to law school when you found crypto. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And so while I was in law school, I wrote about the regulation, well, the lack thereof, because there wasn't any real laws or any type of state recognition of the industry, just because actually I was interested in the space and then was working on it in a non-legal context. And so experiencing there being no lawyers in the space as well as no real law, that was kind of something once I published that, I thought, hey, I think that this is gonna grow. And as a result, started kind of representing clients in the space because back then it was a lot more small in the context of interacting with other clients, you just see a lot of the same people. And so we started representing some of those smaller clients. And now obviously fast forward to today, and our, our, there's a lot more clients in the space, a lot more different areas in the industry as well. So not only that, but I can imagine that some of those clients that were small in the beginning, if they're in the space still today, they've become, uh, some of them probably become, if you will, giants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that sincerely, right? No, just yeah. That kind yeah. Of world. It's wild to see startups kind of transform like that. So but let, let's go back before, because my, my gut feeling here tells me that you were not originally going to do this as your, <laughs> when, you, when you went to law school. So what, what, uh, you know, what, had, what idea was it originally that had you want to become an attorney? Uh, so I worked actually in politics before and wanted to, as well as the federal government in a non-legal capacity. And so I wanted to go into government and I was really interested in constitutional law. I was interested in kind of how governments work, specifically at the federal level here in the United States. And so I had worked for a couple of different individuals who were candidates and they had all gone to law school. And so they thought that, hey, this is a good trajectory. This is a good path. 
And so that initially sparked my interest. And interestingly enough, like fast forward to today, we help state legislatures draft legislation that they can propose. Oh, absolutely. That Makes sense. Help for blockchain and crypto. So, so that was my initial interest in law school. And then in law school, that's where I started diving into the crypto side. And it just kind of took me from there. Yeah, I have a belief that everything ends up working out the way it's supposed to. You know, you probably never saw this, but this is exactly where you were supposed to be. So, like it was, it was just taking you right there, which is, I mean, it seems like that to me anyway. Um, so let's kind of talk about this then, because uh, it's really dual here. And, and what I mean by that, normally I would really only ask about law, but crypto is so new. What were the early days of both you being in crypto and as well as the early days of the law firm learning how to navigate this, this world yeah. that is, it was really unnavigated at that point. I mean, you kind of, you guys, you know, in many ways were like uh, the, the, the early uh, explorers, if you will. For sure. Yeah. Lots of trial and error, hundred percent. And like on the, <laughs> on, on the, on the tech side, like the, for those, if anybody knows how crypto mining works, like it has changed drastically over time as well. And so structuring a business and then launching that business was uh, really very much a kind of a new endeavor in that context. And so we basically started kind of not mirroring a traditional entity, but instead tried to create a tech company that was just mining crypto. And then on the legal side, it was really about, hey, okay, how do we try to deduce from traditional laws, uh, like how regulators or legislators or judicial decision makers would approach the industry? And right. what type of risk mitigation strategy can we glean from that? And I, I mean, even fast forward to today, and we're still doing that. Like there, there's no like major standards and practices. We still have no federal legislation. That, that's what I mean by saying it's still, it's, still, it's still much the wild, wild west in the sense that every day is a learning day. And you know that within, you know, like every month could have new regulations put in place and new, I mean, it's just, it's so, it's so, I, I am only now learning it. Uh, I started learning it back in 2016, but I, I saw that original paper that, that went out that the, um, the doctor wrote, I believe it was a doctor, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 I read that and uh, I got about halfway through and I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not right. <laughs> it literally was just too much for me because I, you know, as, as intelligent as I feel I am, that was just a whole nother language. And I feel like I need to get some more base knowledge before I, before I jump into it. And that's kind of what I'm doing now. And the NFTs have really, uh, I'm sure you know a lot about those as well, but it seems like NFTs are, are really becoming uh, something that is going to be huge. Um, not just huge, let me say a way of life in the future. We just, you know, we don't see it yet now because it's not there for everybody, but eventually it will be, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, what I'm I, reading. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and highlighting your kind of like the educational hurdle. I think that like everyone kind of has this inflection point at a different point where they realize, oh, okay, I see Time some learn. Like, some real world value in this context. Cause it's like there's there's cryptocurrency and NFTs and Web3 and that whole aspect of the industry. And it's all being built, obviously, on blockchain technology. And so that's yep. another component of the industry as well, that when you combine those two together, it's, it's pretty transformational from an internet perspective and also like how we share information via the internet. Because I always bring up this like really quick example of if I send you a PDF of information, how do you know that PDF is the original information that I put into that PDF? And right. Sent you, right. We're relying on a third party. Well, what happens when you remove that third party and re rely more on a technical piece of technology that of actually security. facilitating that exactly yeah and I, I think a lot of people don't understand how much security is involved with crypto and right. you know the way uh, and and i say that because until i got my first wallet you know i i was as novice and noob as you could be right and i, I just didn't realize that it was that part of what crypto is is the extreme security of it right. which adds a whole new layer of like you say, what you're sending through, what you're, what you're giving to someone else and trusting that they get what you sent. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, with that, what, what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome, you know, personally or professionally when it comes to, because I, I, and I, this one is, is the way the question is, but it really pertains to you with, you know, it's both your personal world as well as your, your business world in the sense that you have a crypto mining and you're, you're doing a law firm. So what's the biggest challenge that you think you've had to, to overcome with that? For sure. Yeah. So I, I think one of the largest issues is really trying to deduce some type of clear path forward from a regulatory standpoint. 
So we get these snippets probably every like six months from governmental regulators here in the United States, as well as abroad. And then we kind of have to package them all together and then come to clients and say, hey, this is what we think you should do from a risk mitigation perspective. You're operating in the industry. You have some type of product or service or something along those lines. How are you going to properly implement that with the mindset of mitigating risk? Because there are a lot of risks associated Absolutely. with like launching a token or something along those lines. And so our biggest hurdle, which still is holds true today, is really kind of packaging that and then synthesizing that information. Because going back to your earlier point, this industry has a plethora of information from a technical perspective that is extremely complicated. And honestly, like only a very small percentage of people will ever understand the complexity. The entire, of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so as a result, we're having to try to figure out and navigate this route of being like, okay, how do we dumb down, for lack of a better term, a lot of this information and then synthesize it and provide it in terms of service. So that's definitely been our biggest hurdle from the beginning. And also the industry has changed so much too. Like I think of, I have clients that when I first started out, I still have them, but the majority of my clients, I didn't. And as a result, there's totally new industries. You think about like real estate or FinTech or traditional finance, things like that, areas that weren't necessarily being disrupted by this technology five, six years ago. And today they are. And so that's, a, I think that's another real challenge in all of this is having to not just understand the technology, but then dive into one of these specific industries where it applies and learn everything in that industry and then combine it together and bring it back to the table. So that's definitely one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, I would imagine, you know, it's, it's funny because you were talking about it, you know, um, have you ever heard of, a, I, think, I believe it was called Greek fire. Did you ever uh, study Greek fire here? It was an old weapon. It's one of those old, you know, biblical type weapons that they and not not necessarily biblical but just you know ancient rome um, hmm. or ancient greece excuse me the bottom line of it was is that no one person understood how it all worked so that the yeah. enemy could never get it right but it's funny because blockchain and crypto kind of remind me of that it's like no one person really understands this entire technology you kind of pick a piece of it that you become an expert in and understand that and understand how it relates to it but not you still don't have full understanding of you know the mechanisms and the and the complexities within each within each vertical, if you will, because that that's it, it is really you know you say it's complex, and I think that's <laughs> I wish there was a word that took it to another level because it, it is more than complex to me. It's like complex on top of complexity, right? If that if right. that makes sense, a hundred percent. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree, and true uh, true to the industry as well because it expands so fast right it's year, it's there's always new areas and so it's yeah, just as soon as one complex. thing gets done it seems like that opens up five avenues of what if what if what if and and then people are just you know yeah they're bouncing on it they're not hesitating either that's the that's the other thing that i'm seeing is like nobody's nobody has a real hesitation which again the wild wild west factor i bring that back because it's like they see it and they go for it they don't they're not worried about either a the consequences or b anything else because they just want to get involved and get into it as quick as possible. I see a lot yeah. of that at least. So. No, it's spot on, and I think that again, like people can dive into the industry without having any educational background because That's, yeah, you can. <laughs> right. and, 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 and there's limitations to that because so I teach a blockchain and cryptocurrency law course at uh, Drexel University's law school in Philadelphia. Oh, nice, my my uh, that's where my that's funny. My uh, my cousin graduated Drexel. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's actually like my I uncle to... and cousin, I forgot to tell you, live in Philly. I, don't, I forgot to mention. Oh, nice. So I went to law school there as well. And so now I teach this course to like lawyers or students who are in law school. And this is the first time we're seeing like people actually getting education before they dive into the industry. Right. And I yeah. think that's so important at the undergrad level, at the educational level, like that's huge. And that's just starting to happen now in the last year or two years. Well, it's funny. I mean, you, you know, it's exactly what I told you, obviously, before you said that, like, I, I looked at this, I thought about getting in. And then I said, No, it's not I'm not going to get into this until I have enough understanding of my pieces. And the funny thing, the only reason I've gotten into it is I have been gifted now like five different NFTs. Because these, the, I'm sure you've seen that people are doing these NFT giveaways, like just constantly right now, right to get their, their projects out there. So I've ended up getting some of these. And I'm like, Okay, that's cool that I have them. I have a wallet, so I have them, but they're, to me, they're just still sitting on standby because I want to understand, A, the value, two, the differences between different NFT and all, you know, just, you get it. So yeah. it just, it becomes, 
it becomes something where you're like, okay, I mean, I haven't, but I don't feel like I'm in it. And what I mean by that is I haven't made any choices to purchase anything or put any money into it. And I'm not going to until I understand, you know, that's the best approach in my opinion. And nine times that people don't take that approach. So no, that's, that's my whole point. Yeah. I think I would, I think it's funny you say 90%. I think that's probably spot on more people are getting into it without any knowledge that just someone says, Hey man, buy this. And they're like, okay. And then they follow their steps to do it. (laughs) Which is why we need more legal clarity from regulators and legislatures, because there's this consumer protection issue that's going on right now in the industry. And you have these massive projects that fail and people are out there funds and they launched into it without any education. It's funny. Uh, one of the first things uh, I love that you're, you have the name bull and I, I didn't bring it up yet. Uh, I was waiting for the right time and I think it's now, but one of the first things that I saw when I started looking at the NFT world specifically is that they consider, they look at it just like stocks. There's a bull and a bear and they, so, it, it, you know, having that name is just uh, spot on for so many reasons, a really good name. So <laughs> yeah, it's worked out. It, it's so funny. I had it for the obviously my entire life and the majority right. of like majority you can't play. That's what I'm saying, dude. This was your life was leading you to this bully. If you can't <laughs> tell that, like you didn't even know, you know, but this is where it was all it was all heading here. It was planned out for you, man, clearly. So <laughs> what's your uh, proudest moment? And what I mean by that is the one that um, you know, the highlight that you feel like you have right now. And and quite frankly, I feel like you have many more to come, but what's the highlight to date? Yeah, for sure. So we now have attorneys in every time zone in the United States. And I think that's our largest accomplishment because I think for a long time, this was very much viewed as a solo practitioner based area where there's just one lawyer who focuses in on it, is hyper focused in the industry across the board. But going back to the earlier point that you made that we were talking about, there's so much complexity now in siloed different areas that now there's even attorneys that are in this space that are focusing on one avenue of it. Just a piece. Exactly. And so I would say that, so we, I mean, we are on the West coast, we're in the central time zone and we're also on the East coast now. And I I think that that's a testament to the industry growing and also becoming more specific in the context of what type of industries it's disrupting. No, I, I, uh, I, I can, I concur. Uh, I'll just put it like that. Mm -hmm. So with this uh, industry, what are your, who are your mentors and and what would be the the one, (laughs) if you want to give more than one, that's fine. But what would be the one piece of advice that you feel like is most beneficial? It's funny because in the industry that I was in before, I had a bunch of mentors and this one is a little bit unique in that it's been pretty difficult to find a mentor because of because, new- because of its uh, new. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I, I will say that there's, so there's two individuals that I've interacted with for years in this industry who I, I, I really respect. One of them, his name is Peter Van Valkenburg, and he's actually a writer for Coin Center, which is a nonprofit lobbying industry-based NGO in DC. And he writes all these publications about the space. And I, I've always enjoyed reading his material. And I think that he has a ton of time to just dedicate towards research. And it's amazing. And, and so I see that as creating a lot of value to help solve that educational hurdle. Um, so I don't necessarily consider him a mentor, but very much but somebody. No, but a very, uh, somebody that you, I mean, hey, Sam, if being a nonprofit, I imagine a lot of his stuff, uh, stuff is accessible free just by doing yeah. a search for him and, and looking for his, his uh, materials. Right, right. And there's also a non-biased component to it as well, which is super refreshing because I think a lot of people have an agenda and they're coming from the private side. One side and as a result, they're, it's much more balanced. Um, and then outside of that, I, I, I will say that, again, like there's, I, I wish- The choices that, are few and far between, I get it. <laughs> few between, for sure. Um, no, but uh, the uh, so uh, Gary Gensler is now the commissioner of the SEC, and I, I think that while I have some critique over his approach to the industry, he understands the technology, and I think that that's really beneficial for regulation key. in the United States. I think it's key. Right, when you're talking I mean, about you know bringing the old school in with the new school, and and having them somehow meet yeah. in the middle without doing this, and rather doing right. doing that. Right. Yeah. And Hester Peirce, also known as Crypto Mom, she is a commissioner at the SEC, and she's been the largest advocate for the industry in terms of being like turning to the SEC and being like, I'm a part of this organization. We need to provide more clarity. And so if anything, like I see her as such an asset to this industry. She's been massively helpful. I've been lucky enough to interview her and talk with her about the developments in the industry. And as a result, I think that she's kind of like top of my list in terms of people that are just like very 
trying to kind of create that balance between, hey, this industry is legitimate, even though if you read like Yahoo Finance every day, you're going to think that it's not. Right. But there are very much real world applications that are going on in this industry that are legit. And this is, you know, I, I mean, I, I know we're probably sound like we're, uh, what is it, beating a, beating a dead horse? I think is that, is that the saying? But I mean, the reality is it's so new because of that, you really don't know. There, and let me just give you a for instance, and, and I think you'll understand, but I, I, really, I really see this comparable to the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, the iPhone, though, has moved a little bit quicker only because it's a piece of technology that is different. It's easier to grasp for the whole world, right? But when that first came out, I remember showing people, I remember watching um, Jobs' first announcement of it. I'm like, this is going to, he's right, this is going to change. This is going to not just, it's going to revolutionize the way that we communicate, mm -hmm. and it's going to change things to the point where we, he even said it back then, like some of the changes are not going to be what you expect and they're not going to be what you like either. It, this is going to change everything. And right. crypto is one of those things that is, it is on that path. I think it's going to be a little slower simply due to its complexity. And that is the, that is the only reason that it's slower because an iPhone, no offense, he made that to where any idiot could pick up an iPhone and use it, right? right. That was the beauty of it. Crypto is not at a point where any idiot can understand it and do well in it. Anybody right. can get into it, right? And I, and I mean, that we, we've already talked about that, but few and far between actually excel in it right now. For sure, yeah. And there's, there is that technical competency requirement that like, if you talk about older generations, they just don't have that. They, they, they didn't grow up in that environment. So where no again, so this will be a generate, you know, and I think, uh, not that I like to quote him or anything, but I think Elon was one of the ones that talked about it and many people have agreed because of that, and the fact of what it is. So due to the nature of what it is and due to the fact that the older group is not really going to understand it or be able to get on track just due to where they are, you're going to see a huge wealth, a huge transfer of wealth because of that. For sure. Yep. Absolutely. Sorry, but that cuckoo only goes off when I say something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was spot on. So it yeah. wasn't. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just teasing. Yep. <clears throat> so with your, um, <clears throat> you, you have such a unique, um, practice what is a, a daily like something you know kind of give us just a, like a, a real quick typical day for sure yeah so a, a lot of it is working with clients to make sure that they're not breaking the law <laughs> uh, and, and then also weighing in on kind of technical developments or aspects of their product or service or say they want to launch a cryptocurrency whatever it is that they're doing or say they have a game that is based in nfts or so on and so forth whatever it is they're doing we're coming from the compliance side. So we're making sure that all of their legal information, Protecting them. public facing, yep. yeah, is legitimate, is in line with prior traditional regulation, that they're not running foul of securities laws, banking laws, all that type of stuff. So the way that that manifests itself is really just communications with the client, drafting documentation, and then also in a different vein, um, representing clients in court where disputes have arisen in this industry. And there have So been you do quite. litigation as well? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we and, do. You know, just a quick note, too. If somebody's coming to you, um, I would imagine you have to know how to either A, put them in touch with someone you trust, or B, take care of copyrights, trademarks, and patents as well. Exactly. Yeah. So we have a lot, we have a whole corporate side to this service that is like we can start from day one, no entity, just talking with the, the take them all the way through and take them all the way through. Yeah. Cool. I, I, that just dawned on me because of the fact that you were, you know, you're talking about the, We'd already talked about, yeah, the, I know there's games in there, but, you know, a lot of these games have uh, definitely copyright and trademark. And then some, some games even have the opportunity at patent if they are introducing a completely new form of anything, right? Um, I had a patent myself, so I know uh, what it takes. You have to have, you know, so as soon as you said that, it just dawned on me, you guys can probably, or, mm -hmm. and if you, if you don't even handle it in-house, I guaranteed you have a referral network that allows you to get the information or get somebody specific Absolutely. when you don't have it you know like that if you don't have that piece for sure especially now that you have so how many how many folks all together are in the firm if you don't mind me asking just real quick uh so we have 13 so we're still a small like boutique yeah, but that's not but, 13 yeah. for a type of firm that you are that i mean that's uh baker's dozen that's always one of my it's my <laughs> wife's favorite number so if that matters if that gives you anything like it's some people's lucky number man i think it's like, <laughs> i think it's great that you're there and you and yeah. obviously you're not going to stop so we can right. kind of get that impression <laughs> Yeah, um, 
So uh, here's some funny questions, just a few personal questions real quick. What's some, uh, and this is what most people do not know, right? So uh, when you think about this, think about what most people don't, don't know. Quirks, maybe strange habits, or maybe a, a, a hobby. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's not that, not super interesting. I, I played soccer in college in, uh, Maryland and, uh, have played the majority of my life. Um, but, uh, I mean, quirks are, I'm just like a huge sci-fi guy and which makes sense yeah. with the industry that I'm in. So like That's sci-fi, perfect. sci-fi reading since I was a kid has led me to this point as well, for sure. Like these types of concepts, digital currencies, uh, universal currencies, all that type of stuff has been embedded in my brain for a long time, reading all the sci-fi books. And so I, I think that that's probably a more like quirkier thing about me is that I just can't get enough of it. I, I've said it twice. I'm going to continue to say it. Uh, you can either see it or not, but there, there's so many signs that told me like, like the way you, you had all these quirks and had all these uh, tendencies already to what mm-hmm. you have become the representative of. Because you literally represent this industry, you know, and, and what I mean by that is you now like it just all led you up to it. It's kind of amazing, man. Yeah. One sure. of the things I do say that I will say I love about cryptocurrency is the fact that it is a numbers based. Um, the whole thing is based on numbers, which you brought it up and, and you said it and you snuck it in there, but I caught it. If there is ever going to be a currency that could be used throughout the universe, this is one that can actually work like that because it would just right. be. I mean, it's not, it's just blockchain. So it's not, it's not based on a, on, you know, gold. It's not based on something tangible or, and, and, you know, that's been our way for as long as we know most, you know, what's really funny is most people don't even realize right. that, that our currency is still based on gold. I think that's funny. If you talk to a lot of people and ask them, you know, how, where does the dollar get its value? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say just worth that. Nine times out of ten, you're gonna get the answer. I have no idea. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or they'll be like, "It's worth a dollar, right?" I mean, that's I've I've, I got that one too. So yeah. (laughs) Well, I think to that point too, there's a financial literacy component to our industry as well, where we're very requires it, right? And we're and we're also like, I mean, so much of our society. When I think back to my education, having way too many years of education, like the the one thing that I never learned was a lot of financial literacy. And even right. if I was a finance major, I still wouldn't have gotten that exposure, right? Like not many you people- You have to know. go out there and, and, and learn it if you, it's not something that is provided, let's put it that right. way. Right, and there's a reason behind that, right? Like let's acknowledge it for what it is too. Like, and if too many people know are in the know, then yep. that's problematic. So, so I think that's another thing that blockchain and crypto does as well is like, it really breaks down these barriers of information siloing and they create a transparent, hey, like, Everyone can come to the table. Everyone can see Level all playing the field, see all the information, and then we can go from there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you really said it, and, and I know some people would be like, "No, oh, you're scared non conspiracy." But anybody that doesn't understand, there's a reason that you know those who have the gold make the rules. Well, mm-hmm. if you disperse the gold, which is what crypto does, because it puts it on an even playing field, well, then everybody helps make the rules. Right, it's just the way it is. Okay. Uh, what's the craziest thing you've seen so far? <laughs> Uh, seeing, seeing a lot of crazy things. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, I figured that'd be a good I, one. I'll give you, I, I'll let you take name two if you feel like yeah, 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 yeah. that. I got, I got one. All right. So I had a client and he's no longer my client. So I'm allowed to share this information. I'm also not sharing any personal information, but yeah, no, you're good. This guy was, uh, was facilitating transactions in Bitcoin way, way back when early days. So like was basically connecting two parties and just taking a fee for like having them transfer Bitcoin. Right. So he, he just made, he was kind of like a broker, right? He would make a, a fee exactly. for transferring yeah. crypto yeah. from one person to another. Right. Right. And uh, it turns out that's illegal unless you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> but the crazy thing was, is that he had made all this money and I go to his house and he's giving me a tour of his house and he opens the door to one of his rooms and there's this massive tub just sitting in the middle of the room. And again, like this is a crypto rich guy. He made all this crypto money. There's a huge alligator just sitting right in the tub. And this is just sitting in his house. And so I'm sitting there going, I launched my practice a year and a half ago. This industry, there's no other attorneys in it. And I'm standing in one of my clients' house looking at an alligator sitting in his bathtub. And I'm like, you know, some of a movie. Yeah. Some of the people in this industry are so like they're all over the map, like the best way possible. So uh, that's that's definitely one of the crazier experiences as a practicing lawyer 
going to my clients. Yeah, I can't imagine. Did you do a double take? Did you kind of step back at first when you like, yeah, okay, I mean, that, like, did you almost think that it wasn't alive for a second, even that maybe this was a prop? Definitely for sure. But then like it, my like instincts kicked in and I was like, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I should, <laughs> we're not going all the way to this room. Are we? Like, <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Um, that's but yeah, yeah, that, that's one of them. And then the other one is uh, there's an exchange in Russia. This is actually well before the Russian Ukraine situation that's going on. Oh, obviously, yeah, yeah. There's an exchange in Russia that um, they had just get gotten slapped with some violations of uh, um, these sanctions across different countries, and uh, and we did an, an audit of the uh, transactions that they had. And we were we got exposed to a lot of different transactions from a lot of bad organizations throughout the world. And so wow. I think that, and that's another, it's a good- Would you call that an eye opener there? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Which like, and that's the other thing too, is that like, it, I, I don't sit here because there are people in the industry that are like, no regulation, no oversight. Like, right. This they, is want completely, a complete, like, they, they want more than the wild, wild west and to, right. for it to stay right. that way. Yeah. Right. And it's not about, it really can't survive that way, in my opinion. So we need not some type of oversight. Need. And that, that was just one of those exposures where I was like, whoa, there's some pretty bad organizations out there that are utilizing crypto for sure. So. Yeah, I, 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 I say that that's probably the same kind of eye opener as the first time that I um, understood what a dot onion site was and the deep dark web and, and what that like when you actually find out that that's where more Internet traffic is actually dwelling, you realize that's the eye opener of where the world actually is. You're like, oh, man, what are my neighbors doing? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I always uh, I always bring up if anyone doesn't think that their information, like their social security number, is not on the internet, you're fooling yourself. Oh, please, <laughs> man! Like it's it's really a matter of you. Uh, uh, you know, I say you just keep putting out positive energy. That's all I say. Like some of these people that get hit, I want to ask, and they're like, "What's some of your closet uh, things going on?" Can you yeah. just name one skeleton that maybe had this marked as you had it coming, kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, right. So. Uh, uh, Going back early, uh, and you'll like this. Uh, this one's really easy. Where are you from, and what was it like growing up there? For sure, yeah. So I'm from uh, Bucks County, which is about north, hour north of Philadelphia. And, okay, so uh, you're a, a Pennsylvania man from, Pennsylvania, uh, from the beginning. Yep, yep, that's right. Yeah, uh, I, I've also lived in South Carolina, but mostly in Pennsylvania. And uh, too. nice, I was in Greenville, uh, uh, Columbia, and. and uh, Columbia and West Columbia, Casey area, if, it, if you know that downtown yeah, or that uh, sure. West area. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We used to go to Columbia all the time as well as Charleston. Oh, um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, born and raised in, in Pennsylvania and, uh, and I still live in Philadelphia. I go to New York a bunch now, but yeah, still in Philly. Oh, I can imagine that you probably take a lot of trips to New York and then um, some other cities too, I would imagine uh, just some of the bigger ones. Do you ever end up going to Chicago? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Chicago, yep. LA, Boston. Chicago, Boston. Yep. 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 What about, just... uh, what about any of the Texas guys like uh, Houston or, or Dallas? I imagine there's a lot of crypto going on down there. Yep. Those yep. Def too. Definitely Houston. We were just in Austin. There's a I, really I was literally about to say Austin as well, because they're Austin and San Antonio are so on the rise that people don't know yep. how big those cities are going to be. They were the two cities during the, uh, remember the home build the builder, uh, bubble back in uh, 08 or 07 yep. 08, yeah yep. where the builders were basically every builder was hurting for money but not in those two cities those dudes the builders in san antonio and austin were still just pumping out houses and selling right. them like crazy crazy right there's a lot of demand there yeah yeah, oh, yeah. yeah one of the largest crypto conferences in the world was actually just there last month so we were there what was that. the name of it consensus consensus i'll have to look that up. um so growing up uh, you, you talked about this a little bit. So what you think, you know, we, you said you were and much like, like me, by the way, big nerd, like I went to star Wars at five years old, man. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? So like, I, I literally watched that entire franchise. My father and I had the button, uh, may the force be with you like three months before the movie came out. We had no idea what the hell the force was. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> I'm serious, man. We, I, I don't know if you see, but, uh, other than the one Simpsons, because I do love Phil Hartman and, and God bless him and may, you know, rest in peace. Yeah. The rest of the, the rest of those, that uh, Darth Maul, you'll actually be interested in because that's the one with his gray. So there was only like a thousand misprinted where he had a uh, gray vest. 
Right. So, right. Yeah. That's amazing. But it, it, I mean, always been a nerd and, and I know what, you know, inspired me to go in that direction, but what do you think was your biggest influence pointing you in the direction of numbers and, you know, sci-fi mm -hmm. and, and, and all of it. Yeah, for sure. I as mean, law as well, like, put, you know, put that in there too. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, the, the seminal book that is always comes to mind for me is Ender's Game. And, uh, and that's, and then after that, just like kind of opening the floodgates for just reading. And I mean, like, obviously with the crazy Dune movie that's out now, like reading Dune, reading some foundational uh, stuff. And, and I think that that kind of like coupled itself really just that initial exposure exposure. My dad's a, uh, an engineer. And so I think like numbers and science and kind of all that has always been in the circulation it's just been where it was. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, I mean, law, like I said, was like, it's there, it's not numbers, right? It's much more words, but there's a, a numbers component to it from a rationale perspective. So the, oh, there's a the number, I say there's a numbers component to everything just between you and me, sir. I mean, yeah, 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 numbers, right, right. Very that's true. why I'm a big numerology guy. I look at every number that is involved in anything and, mm -hmm. and, you know, put it to a, yeah. uh, right analyzation let's just put it that way <laughs> right right uh ray ray kurzweil came out with he's a, a famous inventor came out with a documentary called the transcendent man uh mm -hmm. i think it was like 2007 i can't remember the year um but anyways that the, the transcendent transcendent man and uh he, it's where he actually coined the term the singularity the like combination between humans and robots and not being able to decipher between the, the two right and uh and th that it's funny because that led me to a uh, technology subreddit, which is actually where I saw a comment from somebody who was on a chat that said, hey, you should check out Bitcoin. And that was how I got to crypto. Wow. <laughs> so it's just like this kind of stepping stone process to get there. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, with with law, I just cause being fascinated with regulation and just like wanting to have some type of contribution to the industry in that context, it all kind of came together. That's cool. That is cool. All right. So here, these final questions, by the way, these are just, uh, these are quick and easy. Just kind of um, what I mean by that is just think about your favorite thing, really. So uh, colleague wise and the, and you know, like the folks that you work with actually, who would you say you most respect in the industry currently where it is? Uh, yeah. So there's a guy, his, his name's Andy Albertson and uh, he works for a much larger firm than mine. And uh, he is definitely somebody that I have never worked with directly, but we've been on the other sides of transactions with clients. And uh, he's somebody that, that it's really easy to deduce, especially when I'm uh, looking at another lawyer, talking to another lawyer, how much they understand about the industry. And he is uh, top level in that context. And Pure so, knowledge, right? Right, yeah. What, and so uh, you, what city is he in, if you don't mind me asking? Seattle. Seattle? Yeah. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They, they are always, uh, I will say this, there's a lot of fresh thinking minds in Seattle and they've always, to me, kind of been one of those younger cities in the sense that the young like to go there, you know, right. crazy yeah. with all the rain, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And you said you've been, you actually went against him a couple of times, like, but that's where you, you had a great respect for him, but even though he was on the other side, you saw. Is that yeah, correct? yeah. So wait, he, he's representing a client, I'm representing a client, they're interacting. Right other in some way shape or form. oh okay so they're just interact not necessarily against you're just both rip okay now i understand okay yeah, yeah. so, yeah. so gotcha. not, not, not in like, litigation not litigation, but litigation, just right, business right, right. got it yeah, okay. yeah but but he because he it the the thing that i look for in this context is you understand the legal side of it and the legal implications but you really understand the tech and the, right. that second part it's just so easy to glean whether a lawyer understands that oh i was gonna say man you know i i have a a knack as a salesman for reading people and my family can't stand it. Cause I'm like, they really can't fib to me. Right. It's just, yeah. and you probably sniff out a, a non crypto person like that, you know, and you can also, uh, if you're anything like me, you're like, okay, you know enough to talk about it, but you don't know enough to be in it <laughs> kind of thing after talking to them. <laughs> right. What's your uh, favorite podcast? Uh, it's, called, it's called unchained. Yeah, unchained, and, uh, and as you can imagine, it's about blockchain. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't imagine. It's a crypto. It's a crypto. <laughs> uh, they're great. The, the, those guys, because the, again, they're they're traditional. A lot of teaching going on on their show too. Oh, like yeah. uh, understand. Uh, uh, you know, you, you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My one word, like a warning, is that it can, they can get pretty substantive quick from a technical perspective. 
So like, right. I, I always say, Hey, if you listen to this, like, don't, don't walk away thinking like you need to know everything that they're talking about. Just try to get, just follow. Time. And eventually you'll start to each time you listen, you'll get yeah. more and more of the content. Right. Yep. Yep. That's cool. Uh, conference. I, I, it's funny that, I, that this is one of the questions I'm assuming it might actually be the one that you just went to, uh, there in, in Austin, but what is your favorite conference? Yeah, for sure. Consensus. So they've been doing it. I think I went, I've been to all of them, but it was uh, probably like five or six years. And uh, at the first one, there was like 60 people and they had like four speakers. And this most recent one, I think they had, I don't know, like 200, 300 speakers alone and like 40,000 attendees. 40,000? Uh, yeah, something wow. crazy like that. It's insane. Um, but yeah, so I, that, that's definitely always been kind of the highest quality one. Uh, I think there has been a lot of conferences that have popped up that are more either focused on one area of the industry or they was, might not necessarily have the legitimacy of consensus. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, there was one that just happened and I, I may end up getting it backwards. Uh, I do. Um, I'm a dyslexic ding dong. Uh, but see, I think it's uh, NFT NYC. Yep. 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 So I hope I'm glad I got it right. Is that one that you uh, think you might be attending in the future? That one seems to be becoming pretty big. Or did you actually go to that one? Yeah, I spoke. I spoke at that one this year. I spoke at that one last year as well. I think that they, they've been around for two or three years. Anyways, yeah. So I spoke about regulation at both of them uh, over the last two years. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely be there next year. I like the guys who run it there. They, uh, they do a really good job for sure. I, I heard through the grapevine, non-related to law at all, at all, just, you know, on my own, that they're becoming one of the bigger uh, mm -hmm. ones for NFT, at least, you know, specific to NFT, they're kind of becoming one of the ones that people yep. feel like they need to go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, I'm not going to repeat this other question because you, you really all, uh, yeah, we really already went over who your mentor was and, and the best advice you've gotten. So last but not least, I think this one will be curious favorite tools and or software that you use in your specific field. So how about this? Let's name one law tool that you use, right? And then one uh, crypto tool that you use. For sure. Yeah. So the law tool is called Clio, C-L-I-O. Uh, it's a great, yes, I know the tool. It's a great piece of software for sure. And then uh, the crypto one, I'm going to go with I could go a couple of different directions, but I, I'm going to stick with just like the Ethereum blockchain because the Ethereum blockchain is allowing people to build applications on a blockchain that are going to Im impact every single industry that we have. Car All insurance. five of those NFTs I told you about that were gifted to me. Yeah. You right. can imagine. I bet you even know, I bet you even know the platform that they were minted under. Probably. Yes. Open, Open C, C. <laughs> yeah, ERC seven twenty one, yeah, it's the most popular for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's it, you know, and, and but you, you know, sometimes there's a. I used to fight the popular just between you and me growing up, you know, and I was always like, if it's popular, it can't be good. I, like that was my approach to it always, mm -hmm. uh, because I was so into the belief of sheeple, and, and I say that with all due respect. That was my younger, you know, persona. I now understand, like, I always look at something when it's popular and then I decide, okay, is it popular because of it's actually really great and has real, you know, potential or is it popular because it's a fad and it's going to be gone? You can, you know, you can start to pick them, like what's going to be gone in two weeks and what's right. actually going to be there in 20 decades from now, you know? Exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I will say this, I, I what OpenSea and what Ethereum, you know, Ethereum first and then OpenSea, obviously, it, it's really quite... Uh, it's you wonder where it is. Cause I mean, I, I, I used to sell uh, not too long ago. I sold financials and when, when I sold it, you know, you only had people that were educated in trading three things. And that was the exchange commodities and essentially the uh, you know, the securities field. Right. Other than that, you, it, you know, stocks, bonds, all that. Right. Now you really truly have a fourth that is 100% there that I think probably if you look at the number of traders, the number of people trading over here in the in the cryptocurrency is probably almost equal to all the others. Now. I mean, it's growing yeah. so massively and so quickly. It's just insane. It has. Yeah, we represent a lot of funds, a lot of investment advisors in the space. That It's become a huge portal for investment. I think any guy who holds their series six or seven and doesn't look to learn this is going to be right. a dinosaur, not, not, right. to, not to be rude to them. 
yep. they're going to be a dinosaur because somebody's going to come and be like, hey, I want a piece of every single pie. I want to be diverse. I want crypto. I want securities, commodities. You know, I want it all. There are, there are now questions on, this, on the Series 7 exam about crypto. Get out of here, really? Yeah. I did not know that. That's, That's well, hey, at least the exchange is, is, you know, and everybody's people are looking at it and understanding that it's something that, you know, has to be has to be known. Right. Well, man, I really appreciate it. Um, bullblockchain.com, right? Yeah. Uh, bullblockchainlaw.com. Yep. Bullblockchainlaw. Excuse me. I forgot the law on there. Bullblockchainlaw. It'll be we'll, we'll have it on the on the uh, on the video. You know, they'll they'll add that graphic. Sounds great. Well, I really enjoyed it, man. A lot of great knowledge. And um, quite frankly, uh, if you're okay with it, I might uh, reach back out maybe in a year or so and uh, see where you folks are at and see what kind of changes. Because um, this one this one is one that I think is, is really keen to follow in, in many, many aspects, not just because of the growth of your law firm, but the growth of crypto even, even more over right. because, um, you know, I think it's going to be a, obviously a, a two-pronged effect for you as crypto grows, the law firm is going to grow. And so you you know, you might see some exponential growth. That'll be awesome. But I, what I'm really curious to see is, you know, from this point, a year from now, how many changes and, and what has drastically become implemented that has, you know, uh, how do you say, I guess just change the ball game and the way that you play it. Because I guarantee there'll be at least one, two, or possibly even three things in the next year that change this ball game. So it'll be Without a doubt. Yeah. And th that sounds great. Always happy to share insight and catch up. That, that's awesome. I hope you had a great time. Absolutely. Thanks, Michael. Cool. Appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little exit here. And, and with that, I will just say this. Um, please uh, come back. We will be here. Uh, we're recording so many episodes. We're actually a little bit ahead of it. Uh, but the episodes uh, will be weekly. Uh, they might even do them biweekly. I don't know how they're going to do that. But I know we're going to be weekly. So the next episode will be soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Please remember, if you do have some questions about law uh, and, or excuse me, law marketing or uh, even for the solo guy, because we help anybody uh, from the solo law firm all the way up to, you know, 45 or even 100 law lawyers, attorneys, excuse me. Um, either way, come to us for help. We will be glad to give you some help. We don't even charge for that help like so many agencies do. And that right there should give you a clue as to what uh, is really going on. In fact, just a little clue for anybody out there looking for marketing. If you talk to a marketing agency and they don't offer the uh, doing an audit of doing a, a uh, analysis of your website and your competitions ahead of time for no funds, for no commitment, then you should really be looking somewhere else because that's the first thing that they should do before they even give you a monthly recommended budget because how would they know what that budget should be without taking a earnest look at your area, your competition, and your geographical area. You need to look at those. That is all I have to say today. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you again for joining us and we will be back next week. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to 15 Minutes. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.